Hi there, it's been a while since I've done one of these, so forgive me if I've got a bit rusty. But um, anyone that's made a lot of custom orders knows that trigger state updaters are like the most powerful uh, custom triggers that you can make. There's a ton of stuff that you can do with them. And since I last made any videos about this stuff, they've added uh, a custom variables box here, which I think probably mystifies a whole lot of people, because it's just an empty box that they don't know what to do with. So I thought I'd go through some of that stuff, some of the stuff you can do with it. Um, mostly it just puts things into conditions for you, which obviously is where you can affect the visuals of your auras. So I've made a really simple TSU here. Um, it just triggers off uh, a made up event that I've added there, which basically just means when I close weak auras, that a pseudo event will fire and it will make a bunch of clones. I've also made it just trigger off a unit spell cast start, so when specifically when I start casting, I can affect things that way. So yeah, we make four clones, basically. Um, I've put a bunch of stuff in there which we'll use in the conditions later. And when we cast, some of the stuff gets updated and changed. So custom variables. This box, uh, all we could as once, is just a table. And you fill the table with some stuff that it's expecting to see. Um, and so in Lua, you make a table with these curly brackets. So you can start with, with that, first of all. And any item you put in a table like this uh, ought to be comma separated. So bear that in mind. If you see red boxes, uh, red text down here, chances are it's a comma that you're missing somewhere. Uh, and so before we get into the condition stuff. Um, there's uh, another entry that you can put in here, additional progress. And it just uh, you just give it a number. So I'm going to say one here. Uh, what this does uh, is it just enables in your display tab, you'll have this overlay color. And th there'll be one of these settings for uh, as many number as you put in there. So if, you've, if you're going to make uh, in your trigger settings up to three um, overlays, then you would put three and you'd get three colors here. And so I'll just show you in the trigger, we've got this additional progress. Uh, I've added just the one here, which kind of randomizes a section of the bar. And so in the display tab, we've got a color picker. We'll make it this horrible cyan color. And uh, so then if we close we as you can see this, uh, this overlay section on the bars has gone cyan now. <coughs> Uh, so that's uh, the only thing other than conditions that you'll put in this box is this overlay progress. So we'll just leave that there and kind of move on. Uh, so there's uh, a bunch of ways to get values from your states that you've made in the trigger uh, and make them available in the conditions tab. The mo most simple way uh, is if you're using uh, some of the uh, default dynamic info values, so we're talking, uh, you know, stacks or expiration time, duration, all that kind of stuff, uh, then weak ores will recognize that if you just say, uh, so in this case, uh, if I flip over, we're using uh, a static progress type with a value and total. So if we just use value equals true here, then you're basically just saying to weak ores, you already know what value means in this context let's just use that so when you go to conditions find trigger one now you've got progress value as an option there um, now we're i've made the in the trigger just uh, one through four we're just making one through four so if we say if progress value is less than three so basically this will be one and two then make the bar color yellow now when we close you can see we've got two yellow bars for values one and two so we've just taken the the normal uh, dynamic info value and we've allowed it to be seen in conditions. Uh, the next way is <coughs> if you've made custom values in the trigger. So if you see here, uh, I've made one for even. Uh, if the number uh, value it's got is an even number rather than an odd number, then it will be true. So 
we can add this even. But <clears throat> because this isn't a default uh, dynamic info for weak ores, we've got to tell it what type it is. Uh, so we'll just say that it's a bool. And this in conditions now will have this option there, hopefully. Um, and it will give us just true or false. So we just, um, you know, if we pick true, then I'll make the bar color go yellow again. So now just the even numbers are being affected. And obviously we can flip that to false to get the odd numbers. There we go. So this, now we've got a custom value that we've made. It could be called anything. It could carry any other kind of information. Uh, and we've made it available in conditions to use to affect the visuals. Um, in fact, before I get too far, I'll just... Uh, all the different values, the default values you can use, are these. So I'll just paste those in. Uh, they're the only ones that we course will recognize. Uh, but you can just say true for any of those if you're using them, and you'll grab it straight away. Uh, the custom types that are available to you are bool or a boolean, which is just true or false, and that gives you the drop down that you saw there. Uh, you could use string, and these are all uh, in quotes. You're just providing a string. Uh, you can call it string, and that will give you um, some options for is exactly contains or matches. So you can, if you have a string in your trigger, you can match to that. Uh, you could put number here. And like we had with the value earlier, that give you less than, equals to, greater than, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you can also put timer. <coughs> uh, and I think I made one called my timer. So yeah, in the trigger, I've got my timer here. Uh, this will update when I cast any spell, and it will give some timer information. This is has got to be relative to get time, uh, because it's basically going to uh, make an expiration time. So it's got to be somewhere in the future, basically, otherwise this will uh, always just have a duration of zero. But anyway, so we've got a time being given to the trigger. We've got my timer here declared as a timer type. And so then in conditions, I've got my timer. So um, basically I've set it up so that there's a few seconds on each of those, uh, depending on, you know, it's either one through four, so up to four seconds. So if I just say greater than zero, then uh, we should now get them fading out one by one uh, over four seconds when I cast a spell. So if I cast them out up, hopefully we'll see it ping down every second as they reach zero. And so this is just like the default expiration time uh, options that you get but you're setting your own timer. It's not even, you can see actually there, uh, there's no visible time ticking down or anything. You don't need to have that. We've just given a kind of arbitrary value for expiration time, and we can access it in conditions. Uh, the next thing you can do uh, is instead of timer or number or bool, you can use select, which gives you some drop-down options in conditions. Um, so, say I want to make one called my value. So now, because we've got to set up a bunch of stuff for this, uh, we're actually not just going to say equals uh, select. We're going to uh, make a subtable within it to hold all these values that we're going to need to give it. Uh, the first is type equals select. So that we know that that's what type it is. And then we're going to give it the values that will populate the, uh, the drop down. Uh, so I know that they've each got a value of one through four. You know, one of them is one and whatever. So uh, I can hopefully say one 
Oh, and so the first, the key of this table is going to be the value that's provided by the trigger. And the value that I'm putting in next is the uh, thing that people will see in the dropdown in conditions. So uh, just to kind of demonstrate that, I'll set these up with words here. Closing up all the tables. Oh, and there, the other thing that you can put in here, in here, uh, is display. Um, this value here, my value, uh, doesn't have to be what the user sees. Uh, you might want to show it as uh, something else. Well, maybe just formatted better. So my value instead, so that it looks uh, less like a you know some variable. And more like English. So hopefully now, uh, in conditions, we'll have a drop-down box with these four options uh, called my value. So there's my value, drop down. So yeah, equals two, two. So now we're just selecting the one of the four bars that is that has the number two, and we're colouring it yellow. Didn't work. Oh, okay. So it's because I've called it my value. So let's just uh, call it value, which is what the actual trigger has. So it's trying to pull from something called my value, which doesn't actually exist in here. We, we do have value. So now hopefully my value equals two bar color yellow. There we go. So that's the select type. Um, you can see that obviously that gets pretty powerful at that point. You can add all sorts of settings for all these things. Um, the last thing is uh, much more complex, but it starts off in a similar way. So you're going to make a subtable. Um, But instead of making it select, this could actually be any. We're going to make a custom um, condition, uh, which is going to run a function to decide whether it's true or false or, or, or whatever value it needs. <coughs> so we'll just make a simple bool to keep things as simple as we can. Um, and this one isn't going to pull any specific values from the trigger so I can call it whatever I want and I'm gonna as a test case just make something called is moving uh, and so the goal is that anytime my character is moving the condition will be true and we can affect the bars based on based on that so we'll get rid of these values display Um, and the way we uh, defined this uh, this function is by defining a test variable, and that is going to be a function. And going into that function is the state itself. So we're making four states for the four clones. Um, each of those states will uh, be sent into this function. It will run four times, one for each state, and the state will be sent in and so you have access to all the values on the state that you can test there. Uh, also something that we're calling a needle, it could be called anything, um, but basically this is the value that is selected in conditions later, so by the user or by you. Uh, since it will be a bool, this will be um, you know, the true or false that is selected. And so, keeping it simple, we're just going to return is player moving. Um, but now, because the needle being sent in uh, is actually the the drop down selection for true, uh, that's actually sending a one or a two, uh, just because 
Uh, it's not a checkbox which would give a boolean which would give us true. It's actually a drop down. You choose true or false. Uh, and so one is true, two is false. So the way to just quickly check against that is this. So basically, is plane moving will give us true or false. Uh, the needle will either give one or a two. So we just compare it. And uh, now the only thing here, if we end that, the only thing now is that um, this function isn't being told when to run. So by default, it'll only run whenever um, the trigger is told to run. And the trigger is only being told to run as we close uh, the config and if we start casting anything. Which won't catch all the different times when the player starts or stops moving. Uh, and so we can actually define some events specific to this uh, this condition. And again, we define those in their own little table. And we'll need to use player started moving and player stopped moving. So now hopefully what we'll have when we go to conditions uh, is something called am I moving. It'll be a boolean, so it'll just have a drop down for true or false. And it will um, run on these events that we've defined and run this little function. <coughs> so am I moving is there. True, we want the bar colors all to go yellow as I move. Good stuff. So you can imagine how powerful this could be. You know, at this point, you can, you're almost making a, a mini trigger. You've got access to all the state's values. So actually, let's add that in. So in, if we wanted to uh, define something extra, so only if state even is true and play is moving. So this should narrow down to just the even ones now. You can see only two and four are going yellow. So you've got access to all the state's uh, values. Um, you can add in all the custom uh, functions that you want to. And you just return a true or a false for this thing. The possibilities are kind of endless, although it is also worth saying that you could achieve this whole section, this whole custom condition section, by adding these events to your main trigger and when they fire, updating something on the state itself. So it's really just at that point down to the way you find most intuitive. Do you find it best to have your trigger set up the important information and then create you know, a, a relatively simple little test like this? Or do you want to roll it all into a trigger so that you've got all the code in a, you know, a single place where you've got access to it all. I'm just going to look through and see if there's anything that I've missed that would be useful to say. Uh, it's probably worth saying that all this information is on the wiki. I've spent a bit of time updating it to try and get it all correct. And I'll try and remember to link that in the YouTube, vid uh, YouTube link later on. I think that's all for now, though. Um, if there's anything about WeCores that you would like to know more about, then please do comment on this video and um, I'll try and get around to making more of them in the future. Till then, thanks for watching. Bye.